Hey, what's going on, BBC fans? As always, I'm Bobby the Bot. And I'm James the Con. And today we're at TFCon Orlando, and we have the, the prime minister, I would say, of the, the, the <laughs> customization <laughs> class, Duncan. Hello. So, you know... <laughs> So, you know, one of the things we told you we we're going to do is try to get as much TFCon news out to you. So let's hop right on into it with this interview with the Prime Minister of the Customization class. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us what inspired you to do the figure? If you haven't seen our short, it's, what, what did you call it? Um, I don't have a name. I've been, I've been talking about it. Uh, anyways, it, 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 it's a modern red <laughs> There you go. <laughs> well, before we before we get into that, let's first give a shout out to the sponsor yeah. of the of the con customization class, which has been the sponsor for the as long as four, we've been the, doing it. We've been doing, yeah. So it's ages three and up. So want to give you guys a shout out. Thank you for putting this class on. Um, and Duncan, you are actually a member of the TF Consor uh, staff. Excuse me. I am. Yes. Okay. Great. So then let's just. Go ahead and jump into the questions. I know you had yeah, questions. Right. Well, yeah, I you know, preemptively did it, but why did you choose this for this mold? Um, I think, first of all, uh, most of the time uh, when we figure out what a figure is or what it's going to be is obviously based on supply. So at this point, this was the most readily available. Um, and uh, I think with the popularity of the Armada characters in, in Legacy Line, um, this was the best choice and it works perfectly. Yeah, it does. It actually looks shockingly like the character. I'm surprised that Hasbro did <laughs> do something like this, especially with the parts that, um, is it Azim did? Azim, yes. Azim, yes. That was really cool. With the, it changes the whole look of the figure mm -hmm. between the head yeah. and the grill and Oh yeah, his his, sculpt, his digital sculpting job has uh, been fantastic. Yes, yes, definitely. And so, you know, I'm going to claim that these two are mine, but, <laughs> you know, really this is mine over here. <laughs> so, Bobby and I actually both, yeah, Bobby and I actually both worked on this one because we wanted to have one finished to show you guys. Yeah, so, so th this is actually the bot versus Bob Con. Bot versus Con exclusive right there. So... <laughs> Turned out very well. Thank you, thank you. So, um, yeah. So, how did you get start doing the customizing classes? Um, I guess I, I like to go back to just customizing in general. Um, I, you know, like a lot of kids, Lego fan, uh, model kits when those were popular, uh, and I always had a desire to make the things that I could not obtain. So, for example, like um, Batmobile. Mm -hmm. I never, never get the Batmobile. So I took uh, a grater, like a Tonka grater, and reskinned it with cardboard and, and made a car based on that. So that way I could have that figure or that that vehicle and be able to use it. Um, and that evolved into the idea of um, making things show accurate. And I think that really started in the Beast Wars era. Um, and I think my first one was was. Dinobot, oh, and okay. just how it was, you know, it's a really shrunken type of character, uh, and I really wanted to have a nice, tall, good looking character. Um, unfortunately, the one I made didn't transform. I, I took a, an old Wolverine figure and <laughs> chopped it up. And I, can, I can see that. And yeah. used the, this portion of, of the body as the main head, and then, uh, you know, repainted from there and added some extra bits and pieces, and, you know, it looked great. Um, and then when I became staff at the convention, like I always did my custom stuff and put on for show and tell and all that. Uh, and then I started doing uh, a couple panels just talking about customization. And then, yeah, when I became staff, I, uh, I wanted to do some form of customization, customization class. Um, it started small. I think it was only like maybe 20 people and a couple of hours. And uh, it's evolved into this. We had 75 wow. this weekend. Uh, and it's it's grown into a, a big, fun event where people, fans can just come in and talk about Transformers and uh, 
paint up a figure and yeah, just have fun doing it. And really, the end result is is great because they, it's not all about the figures. It's the experience of, of being able to just come in and, and have fun, spend a day with your fellow fans and, and talk to talk and just, yeah, paint stuff up. Yeah, well, I, I really know this, but we told our fans this. We met at the customization class in yes. LA. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, and then from there, it spurred into this, and now we're excellent, doing everything. Excellent. Yeah. So, we, owe, we owe this all to you. <laughs> it's your fault. It's, it's all your fault. Sorry. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I, I, it's become a staple of yeah. us. When we do TFCon, we always have to be there on the first day to make sure yeah. we get it because it sells out. And I think that's, that's, that's you know, so good to hear is, is there are people that are... are wanting to come on the Friday and this is the start of their weekend. This it is definitely. how they kick it off is always doing the customization class and yes. and then jumping into the weekend. Yeah. Early morning customization class. <laughs> yes. Yes. Nine AM. Nine AM. <laughs> Trying to be from the West Coast. It was six AM for me. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I was still tired, but you know. Yeah. So, so you know, this is our fourth class. About how many classes have you done? I had to look this up. Uh, the first class was 2009. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, up until, I think, the f mm, not the first TFCon USA, but I think it was the second one we started doing the stateside, which ended up being two a year. And then when we started doing LA, that became three a year. So a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. do you always do the figures prior to, like, once you once you identify what the character is going to be, do you then do the figure? Yeah. And most of the time, I, it's uh, um, I'm told what's available, okay. and then we have a few discussions of like, okay, so what's what's the ideas that we have to make turn this into something and we get like the best three options and uh, say okay well that one works perfectly or I will jump ahead and do some photoshopping on the base figure and say like okay this is what an option of what it could look like and then um, we have discussion and present it and say like oh this is this looks the best this is great or whatever um, and then from there I yeah I just get the get the figure and start painting it and then I get the extra add-on pieces paint those put together photograph build a presentation do proper promo photos and then publish it okay well on that point what is your favorite when you've done if you can pick, because that must be hard. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I do have a favorite, and I think it's, um, I don't know if it was everyone's favorite. <laughs> uh, Deceptive Charge was my absolute favorite one that we've done, and that was a Prime Bumblebee okay. into Deceptive Charge. That's pretty cool. I wish I was um, there for that one. <laughs> that was a, a Toronto, I don't remember what year it was. Um, but what I liked about it was it incorporated many different skills into one project. So we had some vinyl for windows, so we laid out the vinyl, oh, wow. cut it out on the window, a uh, lot of rubbing alcohol, everyone got that throwing right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a fun one. Yeah. That's why it's your favorite. Yeah, but, but scraping off all the extra black lines that were on there, and um, I built uh, sticker sets and got repo labels to make a sticker set for it with all the decals. Oh, that's the uh, formula or racing numbers and all that. Um, and then what else did I do? I did a, that was my first year making a hand sculpted custom head. And then I had a friend of mine who knew how to do molding, mold it and make replicas of it. And I think again, it was about 25 people for that class. And yeah, the end result, it was great. And, and you know, everyone was like, oh my gosh, while working on it, but then like, in the end, they're like, "Holy crap! This, this actually this came out really great. Well. This is yeah. so awesome." Yeah, yeah. That's how it was with the first figure we did when it was uh, turning Bumblebee into Bug Bite. Oh yes. And I was just like, "Oh my God! Why am I here? Why am I doing this? <laughs> oh my God! This is too much." Yep. You know, Sandy, and I'm tired. My hands hurt. I'm hungry. I want to eat. We still have how many more hours? <laughs> We've only been here for 15 minutes. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was a it was a lot, but again, it does come out. Yep. Completely different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I had a choice on that year to not use white, then I would have. <laughs> well, it's, see, that's, the butt. that's why I just did black. 
right? When I saw it in black, I was like, I'm just gonna leave it like this. <laughs> the details. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so now that you know, we've kind of talked about this side of it. What other figures, you know? I, I see that there's a lot of Hasbro figures. Um, one time I saw there was a Huffer, I think. Or do you use any other? And well, excuse me, take a step back. I think in LA this past time we did the fans project. Dinobot. Dinobot. Uh, Sludge into whoever. G2. G2. The, the red ones. Yeah. Right. Yep. Is it. Based off of you know this company maybe doing it or is it completely on just the supply or how, how do you go about what company to actually use as well? Most of the time it's based on supply. So what is available to us so we can get in more quantities. Um, there are times though when we do have a form of sponsorship or um, supply from a company that might have a uh, something available to us yeah. and they'll, they'll offer it up or uh, yeah I mean most of the time it is is based on supply okay that makes sense yeah. I, I was just kind of curious because I was really shocked to get that fans project that was actually my first fans project uh, character oh, as yeah. well so I was just like oh here's some new experience with this yeah. brand so I, we, we jump sometimes we jump back and forth between whether it's a Hasbro based product or a um, a third party mm -hmm. and I get it it's, it all depends on what's available at the time yeah and, uh, yeah, it helps determine what figure we're doing. I would assume Hasbro products are a lot easier to have in larger quantities be, yeah. than third party it, figures. For sure it can be, yeah. 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 So, so now that we're we're talking a little bit about the cons and things, do you do any types of customization classes or outside work in your free time or? Not really. <laughs> I mean, well, for personal use, yes. I do have other figures that I've built. Um, I think uh, one of my more famous ones was a Nova Prime I did. Yes, I saw uh, that one. Back in 2008. It was at BotCon. Yeah, right? I remember seeing the first place that. winner for that yeah. one, for that year. Um, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was also the first one that anyone had ever done at that, up until that point. Yeah, and no one ever created that character. And uh, yeah, now there's. <laughs> Which is good. I mean, it's, it's great. What, we'll see. Which, so is that your favorite figure that you've done, or what's your most complex character that you've done? That's the one I'm most proud of. Okay. Uh, just the amount of work that went into it, and, and there's like over a hundred different figures that actually make up the figure, uh, the end result. And or and there's a lot of other things going to it too, so it's, um, it's not just figures, it's uh, knockoff versions of figures, or um, the extensions between the, the wings, they're actually plastic coat hangers from the dollar store. <laughs> well, you know, whatever works. <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, and I think that's that's a, a fun thing and, and a good thing about when you do customizing stuff is, is being able to visualize and see um, something that may not necessarily be what it's intended for, but it has the right thing to get what your end task or end yes. goal is. You know, I have a lot of times um, my work is considered Frankenstein, mm -hmm. where you are taking little bits and pieces and just just for the little detail, gluing that on and then making it blend into the rest of it, so that way. And that, it that does take a lot of talent. Because yeah. so, then it, you know, it looks completely different. Yeah. You know, just like with the grill on this figure. I mean, yes. that's 3D printed. Yes. But I'm assuming the coat hangers do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It can yeah. achieve the same thing. I mean, like another one I did was uh, a Thunderwing. And okay, it's, a, it's yes. a giant one about that big. Wow. It was in Florida, Blackcon, I think wingspan like that. Um, Goodness gracious! It's uh, the, the leg details are actually water guns, which I <laughs> split in half and glued to the outsides. But it worked for what it looked like and what it needed to be. Uh, so let's get out of customizing. Do you collect Transformers? I'm assuming you do. One hundred percent. What are you an Autobot or a Decepticon? Oh. Asking the hard it questions. It depends on the character, but I mean, if I was to throw a faction symbol on my car, it's a Decepticon. There, there you go. There you go. You're here to hear first. <laughs> so, um, and who would be your favorite character to play? Um, I like Trax, uh, but I'm also a Corvette fan. Okay. So, that was your Corvette out there then? No, I wish I had one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> And, and so, so are you a, a G1-er? Is, is there a continuum that you kind of favor? Uh, 
everyone's gonna hate me for this. Uh, I'm a movie fan. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I know. I'll admit it. I am a movie fan. Um, but I also, a couple reasons. Uh, I work in industry, so okay. you know it's sort of my realm. Um, I like the complex designs, mm -hmm. and I like, and I'm, I've always been fascinated about moving parts and things and. And those guys kind of do it for me, and I, I like the idea of of the character being in the real world rather than just a cartoon. Oh, that makes sense. You know, um, but I, it's not to say that any other series is you know is not my favorite. I, I do really love Cybertron as well, uh, and all the figures that came out of that was just, like again one of my favorites, and the ones that um, really brought me back to uh, sort of like. The G1 idea was Robots in Disguise. Yeah, yes. the yeah. other one, the old yeah. one, right? Yeah, the old That's one. the only Robots That's in Disguise yes. to me. They, right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, guys yeah. out there. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I've collected for that series almost every single mm -hmm. figure from that one because it was so awesome. Yeah, it was. And bringing back the cars, and you know, I, I love Beast Wars, but I, it was nice to have the cars back. Yeah. Well, you said you're a movie fan. Which one's your favorite? Um. Again, I'm. Everyone's gonna hate me for this. One. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> okay, I, I, I like, and I'll tell you the reasons why. Uh, I like Age of Extinction, and again, it's not, it's not on the top of anybody's list at all. I know that. Um, <laughs> but visually, graphically, it is the most stunning to me. Um, the the grit, the detail in all the characters, um, all the little bits and pieces that fly around. Yes, it's distracting, but you know. All those little details that are in there, uh, I found to be the best within that one. Storyline-wise, I would probably go back to the first movie, as yeah. it's, I mean, it's so nostalgic and all that. Um, but I think the character of Lockdown in that film was the best baddie that I have seen for the live-action verse. And he was just cool, and he just had purpose, and he had he did some neat things, and and I think they should have cut the movie by him <laughs> taking Optimus and flying away, and say that's the end of the movie. Now we're gonna wait for the next one. Yeah, but we didn't. Yeah, they ended up killing him off, and then I mean this whole idea of let's talk, let's do Dinobots for the last fifteen minutes, and they just like run through the city, kind of. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the, the bad part of it. I mean, I, I, but again, from visual perspective, and again, that's sort of my medium, is um, I, I enjoyed that one the most. Um, I think the most fun I had was Bumblebee. Uh, and that that's one, my favorite. And that brought a lot of people back, too, that, you know, with the more G1S designs. And I think I, I also do really like those designs, too. Um, and uh, I'm happy to say I got that uh, Studio Series 102 figure that most people are looking for. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so I actually saw that a few times in stores and I didn't pick it up because I'm not, I, I don't collect the movie stuff and everybody's saying how hard it is to get and I'm like, I should have grabbed them all. So, <laughs> Just brought them to the convention. I think back home, uh, the Toys R Us has had like three figures per store. Wow. Is what I'm reading. So not, you said back home, so are we talking? Canada? Yeah. I didn't know that. Canadian. I didn't know that. Okay. Toronto area. Oh, okay, yes. So so then the party at Tia Pond's gonna be at your house then. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Now, yes. All right. There we go. Yeah. So so then what is your least favorite of the live action movies? Um last night. Okay. Yeah. I didn't like that one. Uh, I think that pushing too far in the past, didn't really do it well, uh, and the execution of Unicron is like, eh, whatever, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, I like going, yeah, I like seeing the slick armor, and yeah, oh, this doesn't really match, it could, you got a lot of bending metal in there, but that was way too much, yeah. Well, I just like that Megatron design. It's that cool. is one of yep. my favorite of all time Megatron designs, I think it's do so Do you cool. prefer the concept where it's reversed, long tail, or yeah, is it better in how it appeared in the sh in the movie where it's long nose? I never thought about that. Because in the toy, there's actually a de especially on the, the leader class one, uh -huh. there's a detail on the back end that shows a cockpit. Huh. And also I think it looked too much like a manta ray. 
Yeah. It could be a good death charge repaint. There you go. Yeah. Maybe. Uh -oh. Custom class. Custom class. Here we go. I don't come. think there's enough figures. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to find enough of those. Oh, gosh. LA would be so exciting for me. Not, not at all. A movie. Not at all. Not a at Beast all. Wars repaint of a movie figure. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm selling my ticket. <laughs> so, so, you know, we have, we, you know, of course, and we don't want to take up too much of your time. We really appreciate everything that you do for the, the customization class. I can actually say I had no idea what I was doing with painting. And you came over and showed me, oh, it's a dry rub. And I'm like, or dry brush. Dry brush. I, thought, I thought you said dry rub again. And I'm like, are we, are we cooking? You know, I'm, I, are we barbecuing here or something like that? And, and so with that, you know, the talents and stuff, how many figures have you made, approximately, custom figures have you made? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> and where do you put them? Oh, my gosh. Maybe over 50 figures, wow. I think. Um, not a lot of them are on display. Uh, most of the con past figures are on display. Um, I am trying to actually gather a box of all of those ones so I can eventually put them on display so everyone can see mm -hmm. at some point. Um, yeah, I'd say at least 50, if not more. Wow. And are you talking about displaying them at like your home or, where, or, or wherever, or are you talking about bringing them to like a con to display? Or all of the above? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the good bot. You can display them at my house. Okay. I, I will. Sure, I will. Sure. I will allow you to display them at my Just house. Just text me your address. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I will. I will have a, a nice case put together, and I'll display them all for you. And I'll and I'll make sure to give you, you know, full range. And, yeah, full range and everything. You know, created, you know, by the Prime Minister Duncan. I don't know why where that came from. I don't know where. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So. In the, I mean, I, I wish we were live, but yeah. it's kind of hard with a lot going on this weekend. Um, wh what is something that you would want to tell people who are interested in taking a customized class or who are looking at getting into customizing figures? <laughs> like, what are kind of the, the quick, easy steps that someone should pick up? Hmm. Um, for getting in the class, I, that's a difficult one to say because it does sell up really fast. Yes. Um, Don't beat us just, to the tickets. Thank yeah. you very much. Just, just be on that button right away. Um, I think for at home, it's honestly just all trial and error. Um, if you have an idea, just go for it. Just grab a Bond off the shelf, or it doesn't even have to be a transformer based figure. It could be a Marvel figure. It could be anything that you want. Um, just get it, buy it, go to your local hobby shop, grab some paints and just try, just go for it. Uh, there's nothing wrong that you can do. Uh, the worst is like, uh, you don't, you're not totally satisfied. Then try again, um, try a different figure at that point. Uh, and, and that's just how we learn, you know, it's just trial and error and just going for it. Just don't be nervous, just, just do it. Just do it. Like, <laughs> do it. <laughs> and, and, and well, I actually have two questions, I'm sorry. Can you actually tell us about the two that you have here? We didn't get into these. I mean, they're, they're up here, and I know people might be like, what is that? Who was that? Oh, uh, so this is the Red Alert um, figure, and uh, it's got the blaster inside, and yeah, all the extra pieces. And this one's Cannonball, which is from the Cybertron era, uh, where it was a Red Alert repainted as a space pirate. Now... I could see that there's a few things different with the cannonball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's subtle, uh, but there are a few things different. Uh, this guy, uh, in the class, it came with a hammer, and this version loses the hammer but goes for a hook. Okay. Uh, and then just the forehead details are a little different. This one matches the Armada base version better, and this one matches the Cybertron character. Gotcha, gotcha. And otherwise, um, yeah, I, I did all these little details myself. Uh, the skulls and all that, and uh, that's all hand painted. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And can people get either of these kits, or are they just? Yes, uh, I believe you go through ages three and up, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe on their website uh, or follow Azim Benska um, render form, and he will direct you which direction to go, yeah. where to purchase them. Um, this one, I believe, is just the upgrade kit, and then you can buy the figure separately. 
Uh, and this one, I think it's the same thing, but um, they might have a package deal. It's not hard to find the yeah. figure anyways, so if you guys right. want to do it, I think you can. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. All right, well, any other questions? I don't think so. I think we covered everything. And, so, and, and I just want to say, I've always wanted to customize figures, so it was really cool coming in LA and actually having to do it because it's always yeah. our first step. So yeah. thank you for doing this. Oh, no problem. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And, and how can fans follow you or are you, are you out on social or anything like that? I've tried. I've tried to do the social thing, but uh, it's hard to upkeep. <laughs> <laughs> well, follow TFCon so, for any yes. updates. <laughs> yes, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> and and as always, you know, we try to bring you what we what we enjoy doing. Buy tickets for the class. Just make sure you buy them after us, so yes. we can come and, and be a part of the class. But. Um, we really appreciate this. Yes, oh, thank, thank you. you so much for taking the time. I mean, out. thank you to you guys for attending, and uh, you know, uh, it's great to see this type of thing come out of it. Yeah, uh, this partnership and <laughs> yeah, this, this show. Uh -huh. yeah, it's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as always, the debate still is unresolved. So we'll see you next time. So all debates are won.